So, as an artist, my career has been diverse, and to me, it was always about looking around at other art forms. Lyricism is something that I've always respected, and years ago, during my rowdy nightlife time as a photographer, I... uh, I had a photographer friend who introduced me to Matt Kelly. And then I got interested in his, his music and gave it a listen. And it was just powerful. I connected with it. We, you know, did a few articles on him. And then I got to watch him delve into the visual realm and mess with some paint and it's been eight years or so (laughs) yeah but but i found him he's here on artist bebop i'm happy to have him how you doing matt doing pretty good man doing the uh, word above average for for the times that we're in man honestly um it's 2020 has been a crazy year But uh, I should be down, but I'm actually up. I feel up. So that's good. And, uh, you know, and able to express everything through through these channels of art, Uh, uh, you know. So that's a a blessing because uh, I was doing other things, like you had mentioned. We were in the nightclubs and whatnot. So all the nefarious activities that go along with that. Being good boys. Yeah, yeah. Now, now we're on our, our we're on our dad mode now. You know what I mean? So it's it's a different ball game. I always say that was another life. It doesn't count. No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you know what I found is weird is that uh, I've made contact with a few people from back then, and everybody's real solid. Like you wouldn't think the people that you haven't talked to in eight years, whatever, however long the time has been, everybody's different, but. I, t- I tap back in with these people and they're just like right away, like you were just like, you know, let's go. And I appreciate that because I try real hard to put like really serious content in my music. I take my art very seriously. It's it, like when I go sit down to do it, it's not just, a, it's not a game for me. Like just, it, it, I'm not like trying to be the next Picasso, like, but I take it serious in a different way because it's like my therapy, you know what I mean? It's like my, like my self-help, you know? And, um, well, let's backtrack. That's how, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. For you, it started with the music. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, kind of. I started painting really young, but yeah, for like, as far as putting myself out to the public, yeah, music for sure. That was your main channel for your voice. Yeah. What, yeah. Talk about the, the, when you picked up the paint and started hitting that seriously. Okay, so I had an incident happen to me, which I won't get into. Um, pretty crazy, wild and crazy incident happened to me, and it kind of it kind of messed me up, man. And um, uh, I, there's a lot of stuff I can get into that that's that's you know personal, but that one thing I can't get into exactly what happened to me. Um, but uh, we could just say somebody tried to take my life and because of the way that it went down, it, uh, it, it shook me a little bit, you know what I mean? To tr- towards trusting people towards, so I kind of introverted at that point and became like a, like a, a hermit, you know, I didn't want to, I, I, I developed a great level of anxiety from it. And, 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 and when, when was that? <clears throat> um, I want to say like 2011, around the time I met you, around that, you know, same time. Um, Cause I hit it real hard. And that's, that's why I hit it hard because I had all this bottled up stuff. So I basically, I had t- turned into an introvert. I, I had been um, homeless, you know, on and off. When you met me, I was virtually homeless then, you know, uh, uh, 
I would sleep in like my friend's cars or I'd sleep in like, they would like let me in a room of their house and like, you know, not let their roommates know or, you know, whatever they had to do to help me out. I had help, but ultimately for like seven years, give or take, I was pretty much homeless. Like my day to day was not guaranteed, you know, <laughs> wasn't taking care of myself, wasn't loving myself. And, um, it just became this thing and I kind of got, you get stuck in that loop. Like, you know, it becomes a, it becomes a thing where you're just like, you believe that that's life. You think that, 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 uh, you, you think you start to believe the lies you're telling yourself. And, and I was one of those people and I found art to be relieving from all that crap that I had going on. And that like fixed me like instantaneously. I was like, Oh, this is it. Like I didn't have to search for like a thousand different things to do. I didn't try yoga. I didn't try, you know, I, I wasn't, I wasn't searching for a million different, it kind of found me. And I, I had been painting since I was like 12 or 13. And I was dealing with trauma back then too. Cause my, my mom unfortunately was addicted to drugs. So I had, you know, th that kind of lifestyle growing up. So I think, between that, having a hard time in school. Now, I don't want to make this whole thing negative, but I'm just, I'm sharing my story. But, you know, between that, having a hard time in school, it pushed me to paint because I was just like, you know, I, and that's what really pushed me towards abstract art because abstract art, you don't have to think. You, you really, it's just coming out of you. It's like a flow state. And um, before I even knew what I was doing, that's what I was doing. And I, I would watercolor and, um, and, <laughs> And it just became this thing. And um, to answer your question in short, basically I started as a child and picked it back up after some trauma in my adult life. And uh, from there, it's it's been a blessing because I, I every time things get hard, you would think since I'm a musician, I would go back to writing music. And I do sometimes, but nine times out of 10, if things get really stressful, I find myself at the at the paint palette, you know, and, and painting something, so. Yeah, I hope that answers your question. I know it was kind of long. <laughs> That's good. So, talk about how per, how uh, how often do you paint? Are you? Um, I'm kind of a sporadic type of artist because I do abstract art. Uh, it's usually like, and I have kids now, so you know how working in between the kid routine, you know, we got to pick them up, we got to take them to gymnastics, we got to do this and that. And so working it throughout the rest of my schedule, I, I'm honestly like maybe 15, 20 minutes out the week. It's really, it doesn't take me any time to do what I'm doing. I just kind of do it. And uh, sometimes how I'll work is I'll take the piece, let it dry. Cause I have a lot of layers. I, that's kind of what people have, have pointed out, at least to me about my artwork and, and so they'll, they'll kind of, you know, stack on top of each other. And so to get that effect, I have to let one layer dry and then go back on it with another layer. So sometimes it's, it's prolonged throughout a course of a few days, you know, depending if I'm really in love with the piece and I want to just leave it alone. Sometimes I'll leave it alone, wait a night and over 24 hours, I've fallen in love with what I've already made and I don't want to add to it. You know, it just depends. It all depends. Do you find a parallel with what you do lyrically, because hearing you describe that, that's a lot of what I would hear in your lyrics. It's what drew me to your music that you were making, that it was dense and heavy and just really layers. Yeah. 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 When I met Gonzo, that's what he said to me. And that, that'll, that'll ring true. If, uh, it, Gonzo in that, that, that rings yeah, the, the graffiti guy. That's, like the first words he ever spoke to me, I handed him a painting. I just, I just gifted him a painting. I, we we're at some big event and everybody's running around doing the thing. And I didn't know him. I've been hearing a lot about him. I was like, I'm just going to give him some artwork. So I just showed up with artwork and I was like, here, and he just looks at it and goes layers. And from then on, not because he's Gonzo, Gonzo's great and all, but not it just ran, it, that. If so, he so the people said that, so the, yeah. Right? So the people listening, um, Gonzo is a graffiti artist in Houston, kind of one of the OGs of that scene. So yeah. that's uh, who Kind Matt's of what made me take here. it more seriously, of course. But then, you know, aside from that, if anyone at that period of time would have said that to me, it would have been like, oh, that's what I'm doing. It kind of put it together in my head. Like, that's what I'm actually doing is layering things, like giving them dimension, giving them depth and, 
and you know kind of and i also paint with a knife so it gives it a weird effect nothing i'm doing is brush like uh, typically i'll do a little bit of brushing at like the base like the background or whatever but anything i'm adding on top any details always just a knife and i'm not even kidding you it's a three dollar knife from walmart i bought years and years like a three dollar cheap stainless steel knife and i literally just you want me to show it to you yeah this is interesting you... trust me just okay, one so second you're not, going, you're not going too far <laughs> no right here it's like where's he going okay i'm back so obviously the paint this is pretty notorious to me because i've gotten used to the weight of this and because it's heavy on the end of it it gives it it's easy to it turns into this little thing right and it's like weighted and it moves itself and all this cool stuff and then the blades like a tonto blade or whatever you call that so the way that I do this is, and, and I'm gonna give away my secrets here, but I don't care because nobody's gonna imitate this just, just the way I do it. I, I've mastered this with this $3 knife. So you take this and you let it run off the blade and it's just running off the blade. So like you're dipping in a lot of paint and, and, and basically the slower and faster you move the blade, the, the thinner and thicker the lines get. Like anybody can do this. Like if you're, if you're patient enough to sit there and make a line slow enough, anybody can do this anybody can do what i do but it's just having that patience of like okay now i need to move a little this way and then also i take other i just i mix the colors before i even go in or sometimes i'll throw the color down and then i'll mix the colors in there but i try to mix the colors because it gives it definition because if i just throw color and i don't throw anything to mix it like a black color or i'm not like uh i'm not your quintessential artist or whatever so like i can't necessarily say exactly what it's called what i'm doing but i always have to have a darker color and a lighter color in what i'm doing for it to show up the proper way Contrast. yeah or it just looks weird you know it just looks like a bunch of different colors some people like the basic stuff i do but most people are into the more kind of detailed version of what i do so how have you been exhibiting how do you show your um, artwork to the world man this is interesting so i as you know, have not been on social media and took a, a big hiatus from all social media and washed my brain, man, for like six or seven years now. And, um, and basically had given up on the idea of that because I was like, you know, I, my music tends to get more attention than my artwork. Um, for whatever the reason, I think it's the culture. I think, you know, hip hop is very popular and, and so it kind of overshadows everything whenever I tell people I'm a rapper. Also, I'm a white rapper, which for some reason in 2020 is still a thing. And people still like, you know, you're a this rapper, you're that. Why can't we just, we're rappers, we rap. We're beastie Boys, like, come on, you know what I mean? You know, you know it doesn't matter. No, you're, it doesn't. You're, like I said, you're a lyricist. You're a good yeah, lyricist. Yeah, exactly. Right, right, and I'm not making it that. I'm just saying it's, uh, it's something that gets brought up which is stupid. And um, so anyway, because of those facts and um, existential things I can't control, basically I end up uh, only being able to show my art after people have heard me, right? So like they've heard my music, then they get interested, like, oh, he does art too. Let me, you know, look at that or whatever. But typically that's the order I find people uh, gravitating towards it, if they do at all. When I started doing this, like I said, there again, I did not do this to like, put it into the public as never the intention the intentions never been to like sell or anything that's another thing i'll never sell artwork for a set price i want you to tell me what you think i should give or you should give me for the painting i want you to decide the price i want the customer to say look i want to donate this much to you for this painting and that's how much i feel like it's worth so people can place their own value to my artwork and that's that's an interesting flip on it i feel because like I don't feel right. I just am not that greedy. Like, I just don't feel, I don't feel right being like, it's $400. Like, it's just not, I, I come from a, a music world where we're get, we're used to getting ripped off. You we're used to, we had Napster and hey, we're used to getting ripped off by the record labels and everything else. So, yeah. So art's a little different and they're more kind, you know? You know, I, I, I like that. My, um, so when I first moved to North Texas, I was writing these articles 
about artists, other artists. And um, the cool thing about freelance is a lot of the times you can control the things you're going to write about. So I just pick people on Instagram that were doing well. Yeah. So uh, Adam Padilla 13, his handle might have changed, but he would make these cool drawings. Right. And or and paintings. And within seconds, they're gone. Um, now, his paintings were, I want to say, priced between $25 and $50. Uh-huh. And so I asked him about that. Right. And he said, "What I, my formula is blue-collar pricing. Yep. I want anyone to be able to afford my artwork. And that had an effect. If you look yeah. at my pricing, small, I, I, I adopted it because I love that because I think yeah. everybody should have the opportunity to have a piece Straight of up. my artwork if they want it. Right. Now, you know, if I'm going to work bigger, yeah, I'm going to charge more, but I, I, I like what you're saying. There's nothing wrong with your formula. If that's, especially, yeah, that's, you know, you, yeah, we, we control, I mean, I'm, I'm going to come out publicly and say it on here, then I'm definitely sticking to it. And that's, um, that's been an idea of mine for a long time too. Also wanting to do 501 C three nonprofit work and do, um, philanthropy, you know, at some point I want a, a, a portion of my art proceeds to go towards something, um, maybe towards like drug, drug rehabilitation, prison reform, something like to that effect. And, um, I would love to do that too as well and make that, um, a big part of what I'm doing with the art at least. Um, but awesome. yeah, yeah, that's just uh, future goals, you know, and whoever's uh, listening or sees this that would like to, you know, po- potentially invest in the idea. That's, that's somebody, uh, that's something I'm always thinking about is, you know, it takes, it takes a lot of, uh, it takes a lot of brilliant minds to bring a, bring about like a brilliant idea. You know what I mean? It's not, it's never just one person like, you know, Einstein didn't in, invent the bomb or do, you know, I, you know, whatever the scenario you want to think of alone, you know, they didn't put a man into space alone. They didn't, you know, none of these things, I mean, typically it's somebody like you giving people exposure. So, you know, uh, I'm not afraid to, to say, Hey, if somebody wants to, you know, jump in behind any of the ideas that I have, I, I'm more, I'm open to it. You know what I mean? Like, I love collaborating. I love, I, I don't care who it is. Like I, 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 from time to time will run into these like 13, 14 year old kids that hear me rap and want me to, you know, collaborate with them or like, you know what I'm saying? And, and I never like think in my mind, like, Oh, I'm 33. I'm, mm, no, like, no way. Like you're, you know, you're here and I'm here. Like, no, that's not how, you know, cause I, I was shown, I got lucky. I got really lucky. Like, because I was able to actually rap lyrics and not just make sounds, and jump on auto tune and be corny. People gave me, and also I, I'm not having an identity crisis, right? Like, I would, I, I would I actually am. love to hear you on auto tune. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you need yeah. to do that just for grins. Man. Yeah. Yeah, man. I should <laughs> get with the times and jump on SoundCloud. Why not, man? But, uh, oh, man. yeah. Yeah, so I, I uh, yeah, I don't remember what I was saying, but yeah. I'm exactly. sorry, I threw you off there. No, but. it's okay. No, it's okay. <laughs> You're right. We need a little humor. I have a tendency to get a little serious, but yeah, for sure. Oh, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, yeah. But it is important to laugh. I'll tell you that. It's yeah. gotten me this far. And <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. I've had to some this year, man, because I've, I've, unfortunately, I've had you know, se- several deaths, uh, occur and, um, you know, some in the Sorry family and so, yeah, it's been dicey, man, for this year. And with that, at least, and, um, well, let, you know, let's go here. So just forcing what, what's up. Let's talk about the positive. Um, yeah, for you sure. took a break from social media. Are you recently coming back on? Cause I was surprised to yeah. hear from you. All yeah, right. I'm so back, what, um, what are you, um, what am I working on? So you're so, so you're, exp- I, you're exploring social media as far as um, promoting yourself. How's yeah. that going? What uh, what are you what are you using as an artist to promote yourself? 
What's jumping okay. out at you? What looks confusing? Right. Um, yeah. So basically, <sighs> new to me is like the TikTok thing. I am completely, I I don't even know, you know what I mean? And, and uh, see, I was a person that, I used to let uh, social media, I was a very insecure person when I had social media before. I was very insecure as a person. I needed constant confirmation and affirmation of who I was, had problems with that, right? And it took me being off for a long time to realize that. And so what I have cleared up with a friend earlier today, actually, too, is that it's taken me to this point in my life to get to where I feel comfortable enough where I can get on social media and I run my social media, my social media doesn't run me. You know what I mean? I'm not, you know, bell notifications go off, whatever, I'm whatever, you know what I mean? There's the phone, it's lighting up. In my brain, it does a different thing now. Like, it's not going, I gotta go check that. It's like, there's your phone, it's lighting the screen up. Are you stupid enough to, to, to burn yourself on bacon and, you know, whatever. So, um, that's a clear difference. TikTok, um, I'm going to tell you, as a musician, yeah. musically, get on there. Yeah, yeah, Just, they, uh, yeah, for sure, I need to, and I have a it, bunch of, yeah. And and just get on there, because you, you have nothing to be afraid of. You're yeah. awesome. I, so, dude, I really appreciate you. I really do, and um, I just... I'm coming different, man. I, I, I'm, I'm coming different. I'm 33 years old, you know, like, a lot of these rappers and... You're a yeah, youngster, they're, they're man. Youngsters, man, and um, oh, haven't lived I mean, I'm life. saying you are a youngster. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. But I'm going to tell you, at 33, I've lived three lifetimes. Like, I, I, I've lived a hard 33, right? So, and, and, and yes, there's a million people that live a harder 33 years than I have. That's not what I'm trying to say at all, because there's little kids in Sudan that can't get water and all this stuff, right? It's there's, not a competition, man. Well, but is there some real stuff going on? So, like, even being homeless in America, you can go inside of a store and rob a toothbrush. There's not that store that exists on the corner over there that don't even exist to go do, you know, there's no truck stop bass, sink bass going on in Nigeria or wherever else. They're really struggling, really struggling. So I just not got that. I don't want to get that twisted. I don't want people to think that I think that I have some kind of victimization going on. I hate victim mentality. I hate that crap. I have so, missed but, you, brother. <laughs> yeah man yeah just, hey, just, this, uh, this is what this yeah. is what they need this is they okay and right now the reason i'm stepping back into the light and, and even agreeing to to do all this stuff is mainly my band um i got a call from a graphic a incredibly talented uh very well known um graphic artist friend of mine that i've also been friends with for about the same amount of time i've been friends with you maybe two three years longer with him or whatever but uh i've known him for about the same amount of time also went through a long period of time without really hearing from him also really didn't like put myself out there so is this john um, no this is uh my buddy slade um yeah uh if, if anybody wants to look him up he's uh, under the right, the, the witness page. Uh, but so basically, um, he calls me. He's like, dude, I have this crazy idea for this hybrid rock band. Like, and so of course I show up, I'm 100% hip hop. I have, I, I, I've grown up listening to, I, I mean, I went to summer sanitarium tour in 2005 or whatever it was like, you know, I grew up listening to Metallica. I grew up listening to like Megadeth and freaking uh then all the like all the hippie music because my, my, my parents were like legit hippies like my my mom actually had a little fling with uh with uh willie nelson went on went on the road with the marshall tucker band my dad would party with zz top out in Nacogdoches. so my parents were hippies and they would show me that that hippie music so like moody uh moody blues and like um the crosby stills and nash the Beatles, of course, all the usual suspects from for that period of music too. And then my sister was uh, born in um, like the 70s. So she grew up in the 80s. So she showed me 80s music. I had like Madonna showed to me and like, you know, all these different, you know, early, early 80s music or um, late 80s music and stuff like that showing me. I was growing up, I was born in 87, growing up listening to it on the radio. So um, 
all these things kind of bled into um, my consciousness. Uh, I think they all kind of come out in the music in, in one way or another, whether it be like dark undertones and the lines being kind of like, you know, I'm not trying to compare myself to people, but just people I've been influenced by, like, you know, hearing like a, a, a deep moody blues line, like say a night to white satin, there's like, it's like poetry, that whole song's poetry. And that just, that just, it made my parents show me real music made me want to make real music and give that back to the world. Wanted to reciprocate what I was hearing and seeing and, and what it was doing to me. I mean, I'm, I'm in this volatile environment, but at the same time, I'm able to go in my room, shut my door, put my headphones on and, you know, I'm, 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 I'm in the, I'm in the ether. Yeah. I didn't so, get to ask you before we started talking, but if you have a track, we could put it at the end of this and uh, people can, get, yeah. can give it a listen. So I do. If I just got um, confirmation. Yeah. Make sure you listen to the track at the end. And, yeah, for sure. I got We're to. Gonna... I think you, there's some snippets on uh, your Instagram. Yeah, that... there's a couple, yeah. and, and there's some visual art that goes along with that. Y'all make sure y'all check that out. Slade's put together some amazing little clips, and they're 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 short, but. They're supposed to be. There are promo clips. You know what I mean. We're not. We're not going to give them the big stuff yet. <laughs> it, it sounded awesome. So, Thank you know, you. back in the day, I remember watching some some videos you'd put together. You had some stuff on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Was that you filming or directing or? No, um, Johnny, man. So he's a Johnny, pivotal okay. part of this conversation, man. And I was waiting to get to him because he is such a big part of this conversation. So, so five five. 60, That's who we're talking about. Yeah, five five, five 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 productions. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I like so to call yeah, him John so, John. So Johnny, so Johnny, man. Okay, for those of you who don't know Johnny, or because he's kind of a behind the scenes type character, Johnny has the biggest heart of anyone I've ever met in my entire life, other than my own mother. Um, he was actually friends with my mom before she passed away. Um because he was the cable guy that came to our house and ended up, he ended up going in my room when I was 16 years old. I wasn't there, I was at school and he came to do the cable and my mom struck up a conversation with him because when she went into my room, she turned on the TV and BET was on and there was rap videos playing and he's like, oh, your son likes rap. That's all it took. So then they start talking. He's like, I like rap. I have a studio. I'm working on various projects. So he gives my mom the number and, uh, and so, uh, she, uh, she tells me when I get home from school or wherever I'm at and, and I'm like, yeah, whatever, mom, like, you know, I'm a teenager, you know, whatever, mom. And, uh, it's like a week goes by. I don't call him, you know, I'm doing, I'm, I'm already recording at another studio in Katie. I'm actually recording at two other studios already at like 16. Cause like when I first started picking up the pen, I got super lucky. I just ended up with studio time. Cause I, I knew two, three different people that just were doing it already. Um, you still live in Katy then? Do I, am I still in Katy? No, I'm in Richmond now. I, I, I moved away from Katy for a good reason, but I do not even get back to Johnny. Um, so, um, at 16, I got kicked out of my house. Um, it was my own fault in hindsight, hundred percent, right? Be a stupid kid. Got kicked out of my house and up like homeless virtually. And um, me and Johnny had been talking and because I had gone over there one time, I, I eventually just uh, humbled myself enough to call this guy that I didn't know at the time. And, and I go to his house and there's a, I show up and there's a whole group of rappers, bro. There's a whole garage full of these guys, right? I'm 16, from the suburbs, don't really have too much experience, like, in the hood or being around people that are, like, into crime or anything like that. And not that Johnny was around that, but, like, you know, these type of people would get into whatever activities they were getting into and then come to the studio to record, right? Because we were recording. And end up, I record, and they're all like, holy crap. This this dude, this kid just came and killed it, whatever. It's my first time record, you know, recording at that studio. So from there, it was like an open door policy. He was like, yo, if you ever want to come back, you can come back. I'm not going to charge you. I charge everybody else, but I want to do a project with you. Like he saw something. He definitely saw something like, you know, and um, 
I'm so lucky for that because because he put me on this pedestal that like I wouldn't have been able to ever do. I didn't have the amount of self esteem. I couldn't you know have done it. He he taught me into getting on stage with the executioner spinning behind me at the Dub Car Show with like. 3,000 people in the crowd. And I was like 16, you know, 17 years old. You know, and, um, but anyway, long story about Johnny, but basically to sum it up and condense it, he took me in and uh, he had his whole family living with him. And, you know, I have a family now and there's no way in hell I would have took me in. <laughs> so I have to give it to the guy. The guy, like, I mean, oh my God, you know, get beyond the couch to sleep on, like, Yo, here's food. I'm gonna look out for you. Here's studio time. I didn't have a job. I didn't ever, I was never good at working. I'm still kind of crappy at working. You know what I'm saying? And it, as artists typically are. So we. Well, make that's why you make, out of it. you make your artwork, you make your passion, your work. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For sure. That's. But um, it took me a long time to get to there. But uh. Yeah. Well, good. At the time, I'm being. A I'm glad you're here. I was trying to. I'm, I'm working within the time frame and in the in the in context of what I'm saying. So I was yeah. a stupid kid, bro. I was I was not a, yet an artist at all. Like, and it, it, if if I was doing anything, it was for attention. It was to get the attention that I was neglected in high school because I messed my back up when I was 12 and I couldn't like be a sports guy or a cool guy. You know what I'm saying? I had to I had to compensate, and it, it initially started as that. I have a passion for music. I grew up on amazing music, like I was telling you, but initially this was an ego thing, like 100%. And I'll be honest, you know? So how long's the band been together? Dude, um, a year, I want to say okay. year, year and a half. And um, we got a whole album recorded. We're about to drop on y'all in December, um, possibly January. We're, we're working within some different things. We got shows coming up um bfe rock club um i believe january 1st um i'll try to get you some info on that so possibly we can get that on there um but uh yeah basically got with them slade called me so to get back to that point slade called me and was like yo come do this hybrid band and i got in there not knowing what the hell i was gonna do i brought rap lyrics to stuff i already had done right because when i write i write to three or four different beats one verse can be three or four different songs while I write the verse. I'm like super bipolar thought process, like super sporadic thought process. Like the moment I'm not feeling the beat anymore, it changes. And I'm just going, I don't care if the cadence is changing. Okay, I'm, I'm moving with the beat. I'm gonna change with the cadence that I changed it to. And those first few bars will have to just sit somewhere. So I, by, by doing that or whatever, um, I started to kind of realize that, um, it, it, there was a, a process to it. There's a, it's just much like art. Like, you know, you have a, a routine, it's a routine. And, um, and so I kind of adapted, I kind of, with the band, I adapted and, um, I got in there and, and, and delivered some really, uh, I think wholesome content when it comes to like, if you're looking for your meat and potatoes, if you want to get, if you, if you want to listen to something and, and not just be mindless, you know what I mean? I slipped that in there. I'm not, you know, it may, what I'm doing on the surface may seem very commercial. It may sound very commercial, but if you invest the time to listen to the words that I'm saying, you're going to get something. It's always going to have something to, to pay you back, to reciprocate, you know? And um, that's what I tried to do. So I just kind of slipped in and did witty, you know, lyrical stuff on a rock band. And it came out like this, like, weird thing and we, we're all just like because because our our singer is a pop singer he he our singer jeremy is a, a a pop singer um our bassist is actually a guitarist um our drummer is from he has he has his own track record he's amazing in his own right um but we're all, all like kind of conforming to this idea more or less and which is very neat and it's creating completely new and interesting things, you know, which is, is cool. it's cool to create a sound instead of just go make the same rap. But as a rapper, it's, it's awesome because I get to get exploratory and that's what I wanted to do anyway. And I think a lot of what you'll find come out of me in the next few years, uh, as I gain control over my own projects and do my own little things, 
is a lot of 80s influences, a lot of 60s postmodernism, a lot of like, a lot of like, you know, things that I've heard, seen, things that influence me will come out in my music. And, and so this is just one avenue is what I'm trying to say ultimately is like the rock music is just one avenue. Um, I have a heart for all types of music. And for that reason, also, since we're, we're putting this out to the public, anyone that wants to collaborate with me, hit my inbox. I don't care what status level you are. I don't care if you have a blue check mark by your name. I don't care. I just want to work on music and be creative and get in a creative mindset and work on different types of music. And that's not limited to rock. That's not limited to rap, hip, you know, jazz, anything, I, anything. I'll find a way to take my lyrics and my, my flows and my raps and adapt them to whatever type of music that you want to make with me. And we can make something new, completely new. And um, yeah, so I want to extend that too, because that's what I'm trying to do. Since I've gotten back on social media, that's exactly what I'm trying to do is just tap in with other creators, other creative minds, and let's, um, let's make something together and see what happens, you know? I dig it. I, lo yeah. I love what I'm hearing. So, yes, sir. Man, yes, sir. how have you been? Because I'm the type to interview the interviewer, and I will ask you, how have you been? Well, like I said, this is a conversation, so <laughs> it's all fair. <laughs> okay, good. I'm good, you know. Um, hit the paint heavy. I paint every you day. You are hitting it heavy, man. I mark it every it day. Heavy. I find ways to do new things, and this is one of them. I um, these are conversations we would have anyway upon seeing each other. For sure. I figured let's let's broadcast it and yeah. give other people things to think about within their own creativity. That's really important to me. Um, yeah. Kill your ego. Kill your ego. Tell that's the message I want to get out to everyone. Is kill well, murder that ego. The thing is, as an artist, as creator, you need an ego. It yeah. takes audacity to, an audacity to. If I it does, everybody says that. If I put I, if I put my mark all over this paper and I say, "Hey, I want you to buy this," that's some gall, man. You've got groceries, you've got whatever to take care of, right, right. and here I am saying, "Hey, pay me uh, for expressing myself." Yeah, that takes exactly. ego. You can yeah. have ego. Just be humble. Yeah. Res so I tell respect. Them, give me what you want to give me. Respect. <laughs> respect. Uh, respect others, and you know we're good, man. Yeah, but no, I I really want to communicate that I, I respect what you said, but to my message to other artists would be kill your fucking ego, kill it, just murder it, just just well, get rid of it. All right. Explain what that. What comes out more. is good, man, because what comes out is good. And we all have, yeah, like ego is necessary because like that's what gives us identity. That's what, that's how we can identify as a person. Like at, at the root core, an ego is like what makes us human, sort of. But um, it's the me. I don't identify, I don't identify with what it does to people. And um, I think okay, if well, we're more, I mean, yeah, let, let's, we're more let's, in tune, more in tune with it, I think that you can control it better if you're more in tune with it or just just being aware speaking about it it's like a ghost you know what i'm saying you talk about it and show up woo. well let's let's define what you're calling ego okay. what are you defining that as so what is it we're um, murdering yeah i i had to go through a few different experiences um with uh uh psychedelics and different different things like that to to realize um, and I can't, it's hard to explain to someone that maybe hasn't had some of those experiences, um, for like a viewer or something like that. But, um, that, uh, killed whatever in my mind was an ego is basically something, something driving me to be, uh, your, your, your soul isn't your ego. That's the best way for me to describe it. Your soul and your ego is different. They're both inside of you. You can like, you can like reveal both of them. You can wear both of them on your sleeve. Like some people don't mind showing their ego off. You got like, look at the president, bro. Like, you know, there's a million people that show their ego off all the time. Um, and they're not looked down upon necessarily, but like, 
I'm talking about more of a um, case by case basis, like a, on a personal level, people should check their ego more often, especially in this culture and society where we're overindulging in everything, like in every single way we're overindulging. Well, and it sounds like what you're describing is narcissism. A ha- bit. Having, because a bit. Y- you should have pride in yourself. But it, it's, when it it's, becomes it's damaging, but, but but I'm saying like, it's more it's more uh, overwhelming than narcissism. You can you can be like, an ego can't be stopped. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I can't think of any good examples of where an ego was at the wheel and things turned out good. Um, typically, when we're left to our own devices and our own ideas, we do what's selfish. So, and that's what you're talking about is selfishness. Yeah, yeah. I say so kill not that. necessarily narcissism, but yeah, like so. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, but th- that's my my message to other artists in saying that it's not a negative thing. It's just, it's it's to get it's to make you think. Yeah, absolutely. Think about it. Like think about it. Am I being an asshole? Like think about that all the time and check yourself on that all the time, and you'll stop being an asshole. Like for real. And a lot of us artists are assholes, man. We walk around just like you said, trying to pander money off people and you know, all these little low ball, low brow activity. It's like, come on, man, you know? So yeah, I, I just want people to uh Well, you just want people to be good people. That's fair. Kind of, kind of, because there's necessary evils as well. I'm not necessarily asking anything of anybody. I just really want people to check themselves. Because we're in a time where we don't do that enough. Because we're, because we're, because we're doing this. Because we're looking at this, this, this six-inch screen, right? Because we're looking at that. Honestly, we don't have time to even think about ourselves. We're just constantly just in. And I'm talking about other people. I, I have kids. You have kids. I'm sure. You know, we're not uh, necessarily signed on to it that hardcore. But there are a lot of people that are, and I find it in the youth. I find it in a lot of the kids, like the younger kids are man, they're on these tablets and they're on these phones and they're on these games. And and it's, yeah, it's a, it's an evolution and stuff like that, but there's certain things that like we're meant to do and not meant to do. And a bright screen in front of your face right before you go to sleep is not natural. Like, you know, being in the woods and camping and hearing birds around you is natural. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it's not natural, like but it's the reality of, what the world is moving to. I don't I see that. I don't I don't, I don't see embrace it. it. <laughs> I don't see it as negative. I mean it's allowed you and I to connect after Talk eight right years. Now, right. You've been MIA it's, it's on a me. Cheat code. It's a cheat code, man. Everybody hey, can man. jump in the game. Well me, otherwise honestly. otherwise we wouldn't be talking. And Maybe. I love this conversation. I love it too. Cause cause it's it's because because we're able to talk about multiple things in one subject because you're because your brain thinks similar and i think in some conversations with people they're like what like i lose them i sound like a rambling idiot or something you know no man it's <laughs> real <thrill>, though <laughs> but um <laughs> yeah anyway <laughs> i just Dude. uh i love technology that's not what i'm saying at all i i just uh i hate what it does there again like like the ego, like, yes, necessary, yes, but I hate what it does. Maybe some of the actions that people are taking with the with the skill set they have isn't the best, you know. I'm going to point this out because those listening can't see, but Matt came into this interview standing. Uh, he's just yeah. a full-blooded lyricist. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. When I'm going to talk, I'll be up there. I'll be podium style. I'm getting ready, he's, man. He's Politics got, is next, maybe. Who knows? Who knows? Got, uh, yeah, man. He's ready to to drop some knowledge on us. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I just really want to have a conversation with you because I'm going to tell the story. I don't know if, if people probably don't know this story. Of course not. But Serge, how I met you, man. Um, through Johnny, of course. But um, the memory five, five. I have of you... <laughs> Memory, memory I have of you is, is legit, bro. Super solid, super solid guy from the jump. When I met Serge, Serge picked me up and didn't know me from 
Joe over there in the corner, you know what I mean? I was a no, I, he didn't know me, picks me up, drives me across town, picks up a bike, puts it in the trunk of his car. I'm like, yo, bro, I'll ride the bike wherever I got to go. Like, no, no, we got we Puts a bike in his car, takes me to uh, Five Guys, and buys me lunch and dinner or whatever. And I'm tripping out because I don't I'm, I don't know this level of kindness. I'm I'm used to around, I, like I'm like okay this is this is different. This guy's different, completely different. And then, you know, gets my number. We end up being cool, whatever. Then shows up later in life and does this huge piece on me with Dex, and at least locally made me famous. Like at least locally, oh. people in Katy uh, Mesa Road area, whatever, because. Because of not just me, because of some of the other people as well in there. I'm sure they were inquiring at the interview because they were in it. You know what I'm saying? Or knew somebody. But it was something to talk about in Katie for a little while, you know? And um, I had no idea. So, you know, yeah. We- so I have, I dude, believe it or not, I get asked about that, that interview a lot more than, especially when Dex made it to where people couldn't just see it when you went on the page. You know what I'm saying? Because people would watch it all the time, and then when they have to log in, they have to pay for it. It's different. So, so what? So what he's referencing is uh, that video magazine, Dexter Bayak, still runs that. But yeah, yeah, back in the day, um, this was I was still doing photography, and yeah, um, yeah, you know, I, I definitely wanted to feature you, and it was it was cool. I, I um, it's funny because you tell that story, but I don't. I didn't remember as much detail, but <laughs> yeah, it's incredible too. Cause I have a burnt up brain The the things that I can manage to remember are sporadic as well. I just, like I said, I, um, when, when other creatives, they have that spark, you definitely have a spark and, um, no, I appreciate you know, just, it. Thank you. Just, uh, interacting. Like I, like I said, I love this conversation because yeah. you, you, you have all this energy and, you know, it, it's good that you are finding different modes to express it and you're reaching out again. And I, have I love to. it, man. Yeah. I have to. Because if I don't, I'm not good to myself. I'm, I'm just not. I, that's what I find the most. It's, it's the reason that I'm back creating. It's the reason that I took a year and made a project with the rock group. It's the reason that I'm, you know, as of lately started a business where, you know, I'm trying to basically – be a party coordinator. And, um, uh, I have several things that I've just up and started, but a few things that I had going that I just kicked back off because I have to, man. And, and losing my sister, I lost my sister back in July. Um, yeah, it was a double whammy. So I, I, my sister and my brother-in-law, um, I won't really get into the details, but, um, so, when that happened, it broke my brain, you know, like it broke my brain again. Like I, I, I I literally felt like I got like hit upside the head with something. And I've had that feeling before been like, okay, you like, it's a pivotal moment where you can decide to let things impact you in a negative light or or a positive way. You know, like it's, it's literally like a flash of, of a second that, that, that decision in your mind happens. And usually it happens without you being aware of it. And for whatever the reason, I was conscious of the thought. I had a thought to go one way. I had a thought to go another way. I had 90% of people thinking I was going to go this way. Because every time in my life I've ever had something serious happen, I go this way. And I was like, I'm going to try this way this time. And I went that way. And it's been beautiful. It's been absolutely beautiful. Um... I'm, I'm happier than I ever have been in life period, even through the losses and through the pain of things because of my, um, because of the hope that I've created in my mind for my life and the rest of my life. I now, I now feel like it's worth sharing more of myself than, you know, cause my, my, uh, my goals were different back then. I was, I was egotistical. I was about myself. I wanted to show people stuff. I had something to prove. 
this, that, or the other. Now it's, it's my therapy, you know, 100%. It's my therapy. Did I lose you for a second? I think you're, you're okay. Okay. Hey man, I am, uh, like I said, I love what I'm hearing. I'm fortunate to have some of your visual pieces in my home. I'm eager to see, I love the new energy. I definitely want to have you back here. I want sure. to hear about the progress. Back, I want to see all the new things you're doing, man. Um, sure. You're brilliant. You're one of my favorite artists. <laughs> so. <laughs> Same, man. Same. Keep at I it. love your art, Keep at man. It, sir. I love the painting is is brilliant. I I I get on your Instagram. I look through. I mean, I enjoy it as much as somebody that would not know you. You know, I'm like, oh man, that's cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, cool, man. Likewise. So yeah, keep it up. Thank you for coming on, dude. So stay tuned. We're going to uh, play a song at the end. For sure. Tell tell the people where they can find you. How do okay, you get in so, touch with? You? Well, right now we're in the in the process of formulating everything. So right now, if you type in "Riot the Witness" into like Instagram or Facebook or even. Um, I think we're getting a few little promo videos up on YouTube and stuff, but we're about to drop. We're going to drop an EP um, and that's coming out soon. So we'll have like a big release day and, you know, a formal drop. But uh, for now, uh, if y'all want to catch a snippet of what we're doing and stuff like that, or kind of get a, a general idea of what it sounds like. Yeah. If you, if you visit our Instagram, so if you just go up into Instagram, type riot, the witness and, um, you can look, I post things from time to time. Um, but yeah, December, January time, be looking out because we, we got, we have a uh, 12 or 13 song album coming out, you know, and so it's, it's, it's good stuff, man. I love it, man. I'll see you next time. All right. I really appreciate you, brother. All right, sir. All right. Peace. Bebop. We're sorry, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time.